Hello everybody, welcome to ISC 230. I'm of course Professor S and today we're going over chapter 9. Let's do this thing. Alright, so first of all, the practice problems. So here's the first uh, three. And for these, like, um, well first of all, it's looking for individual ones. Like what are the values of, um, of the event size or uh, uh, event space? And so, like when you're just doing uh, four coin flips, it's pretty easy. Um, I mean, that's just 16. So um, writing out each individual one isn't that hard. And so it, and if it's not that hard, then it's it's easy to select the ones that you want. So you go bam, bam, bam. That's, that's all that I want. Uh, we don't have to really think about like, all right, so what's this position here? And what's this position here? Like, how do we calculate what's in between? Um, I mean, like the idea is, is like, you got to work smarter, not harder. Cause the idea is, is like when you're, <laughs> when you're out in the world and you have to, uh, find these on your own, it's not, you're not going to be limited to figuring out the way that you think I want you to do it. You got to do what makes sense for you. Okay. And what made sense for me here is just writing them out. Like really for me, if it's, uh less than 20 it's not too bad but once you get past then it's then it's just easier just to do the simple calculations so anyways this is what i did the highlighted ones are the ones that satisfy that condition for the event space and then i just wrote down what they were uh and then for four what is the probability that Celia is the first in line so we think about like all right so sample space if Celia is the first in line, then that means, um, or sorry, it, like if we think about like the first spot in line, how many choices do we have? N. After that, N minus one. And then after that, N minus two, so on and so forth till we get down to, we use them all up, right? Um, so the amount of choices for the sample space would be N factorial. For the event space, thinking about uh, all the instances where Celia is first in line, that would be, um, so we have Celia in the first spot, so that's one choice. There's there's no other choices for that spot. And then there is n minus one, because we, we're pulling from the n amount of students, right? And Celia is already chosen, so we have n minus one. Then there's n minus two, n minus three, so on and so forth down. So it ends up being the event space is n minus one factorial, sorry. So n minus 1 factorial over n factorial equals 1 over n. And the, that simplification will make more sense when we talk about number 5. So number 5, the probability that Celia is first in line and uh, Felicity is the last in line. So we think about, all right, so we have an instance for the front and we have an instance for the back. So that's 1 and 1. And then we have n minus 2 because we already have two, two uh, kids uh, in line. So if we have n minus 2, n minus 3, so on and so forth, all the way down the line for the rest of the kids. So it ends up being the, um, so we have 1 times n minus 2 factorial times 1 or n minus 2 factorial. And then again, that would be all over n factorial. Now, the thing that I want to kind of point out is that notice, like when we're talking about uh, n factorial, what it ends up being is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times, and then we keep on going to 2 and then 1, right? And if you notice right here, this is the same thing as saying n minus 2 factorial, right? Because it's n minus 2 times n minus 3 times so on and so forth. So we get to 3 times 2 times 1, right? So what we can write this n factorial as is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial, all with the uh, n minus 2 factorial as a numerator. And notice we have a numerator at the top that is n minus 2, and then in the back, we, or in the bottom, in the denominator, we have a factor that's n minus 2 factorial, so they will cancel out, and that's why it's 1 over n times n minus 1, okay? For number six, we're thinking about Celia placing in line. So think the uh, box trifecta that we uh, talked about earlier. 
So we ask, what's the different combinations of the top three, right? Who of the 23, how many different top threes are there, right? So that's going to be our sample space. For the um, event space, we think about, all right, well, we have, we think about the top three. We already have Celia, but then we have uh, two other people that have to be in there, right? So Celia could be in any position. That's why the circle is there. They're not, it's not really first, second, or third. It's like one of the top three. So we have, so we did a combination before, and so it's going to be combination again, but Celia is going to be in the one spot. So then there's like two people that we're filling in, right? Because we're talking about all the possible um, finishings where Celia is in the, the top three. And so there's two other spots open and we're pulling from n minus one spots, right? So it's n minus one, choose two. Oh, sorry, 22 is the um, n minus one, right? And then we just solve it out and we get three over 23. For number seven, once again, N is 23. What's the probability that Celia is the front of the line and or Felicity is in the back of the line? And notice it's an or. For number five, it was an and, but we're still going to use it. Okay. So first one, when we think, so the idea is, it's like when we're thinking about or, and we think about like, all right, what's the probability of um, Celia being in the front of the line? It's pretty easy. It was 123. And then 1 over 23, right? And then if we think about like Felicity being the back of the line, well, that would be the exact same probability, right? It's just as, li as likely for her to be in the back because we have one uh, choice in the back and then n minus 1 factorial po um, possible ways to arrange the rest of the people. Um, and since it's 23, then it'd be 22, right? So it's uh, 22 factorial over 23 factorial, which is, as we did here, 1 over 23. All right. Now the thing is, is like with this event space, this has both Felicity in the end and Celia in the front. So we have to accommodate, like if we add these two together, then we're adding that um, overlap twice. So we got to find out what that intersection is. So the intersection is, is where they're, uh, one is in the front and the other's in the back, right? Um, and so the way that we find that is once again, 23 factorial and well, actually we just did this in number five, right? This is like, uh, this, the event for, um, for both of them at the same time. And we found that to be one over N times N minus one, which ends up being one over 506 if N is 23, right? And so now what we do is use the inclusion exclusion principle to find out what this value is. So the prob so we plug in our values and we um, find common denominators and we work it down till we get 43 over 506. And that is our answer for number seven. 43 over 506 is the probability. All right, so for number eight, uh, it wants to know the probability that Celia was not be the first in line. So the idea is if we think about like, well, Celia is either in the front of the line or she's not, right? There's no like any other thing. So the thing is, it's like if we use um, our understanding of complements, we can find out the probability that she is not in the front of the line, right? Because we know what the probability that she is in the front of the line, that's 1 over 23, right? So if we subtract that uh, value from 1 we get 22 over 23. And that's the probability she is not in the front of the line. For number nine, we're finding the probability of A, B, and C. Let's look at A first. Or sorry, let's look at the sample space first. So for the sample space, we're thinking about, we're, we're rolling two dice, right? And the first one, it could be six values and the second one could have six different values. So if we're thinking about all the different ways that those two could roll, there's ends up being 36 because it's six times six. Okay. Now let's look at a, so if we're finding the sum of two dices, look what happens when we add two integers together. If they're e both even, then the result is clearly even. If one of them's even and one of them's odd, then it ends up being odd. And likewise, when they're both odd, then it's even. 
So in order for our sum to be even, then they um, both values have to be even or both values have to be odd. So let's look at an odd value. So let's say the first number we roll is a one. What are all the values that could be rolled with the other die? And that would be this, right? And if you notice, we said all the ones that are odd have a sum that's even, right? So we have here, here, and here. And so if for every odd number that we roll, there's three numbers that will be paired with it that will have an even sum, right? Let's see if that's the same thing for a uh, even number. So we have two, it's paired with two, four, and six. So that's also three, right? So for each roll that we have, so with the first roll, then there is three uh, possibilities of things that could be rolled with the other die that results in an even number. So three times six, because there's six uh, sides on a uh, dice, is 18. So there's 18 things that satisfy this. So it's 18 over 36, or one half. All right, we'll just keep on to that. Now for B, the sum on the two uh, dice is at least 10. So we think about like, all right, well, what are the different pairs that result in a, um, a 10 or higher? And it's these, right? Four plus six is 10. Five plus five is 10. Five plus six, 11. Six plus four, 10. Six plus five, 11. And six plus six, 12, right? So these are all the different possibilities. These are all the ones we want to use. We count them, uh, and there's six, and it's out of 36, and we get, um, we simplify and we get one six. So we're just going to hold on to that over here. And then for number for C, the red die comes up five. Think about like all the possibilities for this to be true. So we roll the first one to be five. And so that means that the other one has six different possibilities, right? So it one, two, three, four, five, and six, and that's it. Easy, right? And it's out of 36 roll or 36 possibilities. So it's six over 36 or one six. Now for number 10, what is a given C? Or sorry, a given C. The sum on the two dice is even given the red die comes up five. And so what we use is we think about, all right, do you remember in the last thing that we showed that uh, if we have X given Y, it's the same thing as the cardinality of X intersects Y over the uh, cardinality of y, okay? So we find out the cardinality of our intersection, which is three, and then we find the cardinality of c, which is six. That's why I didn't, I, I didn't keep just the simplified fraction, so it's six, um, and six over three is one half. What is the probability of B given C? So for this one, what is the sum on the two dice is at least 10 given the red dice comes up five? So we think about like for the list that we had for B, how many of them started off with five, okay? Uh, and that was two of them, five, five, and five, six, right? And so then we do that over the amount of C, and that was 6. And so 2 over 6 is 1 third, and there we go. And then for number 12, we have 4, 6, 5, 5, 6, 4, and 6, 6. That's the intersection of A and B. So what we did is we looked at the set of B and got all the pairs where they're both even or both odd. Okay, that's to satisfy A. Count the amount in there and divide by uh, the amount of elements in B. And that ends up being two thirds. And that's your practice problems. Now we're gonna talk about what's on the quiz. 
All right, so a couple of things. There's password probability possibilities, um, probability of flipping a coin so many times, uh, probability of people ending up in a line, pigeonhole principle, make sure you know that well, uh, inclusion exclusion principle, that's good. Lexicographic order, know like how to find like the next permutation or the next subset. Uh, conditional probability, we just covered that. Um, it's going to be kind of a little uh, different than what we covered in the book, so make sure you have your notes. Uh, permutations and combinations. Um, one of the things that's going to happen is I'm going to give you a problem. I'm going to say, is this a permutation or combination? You're going to tell me which one it is and then calculate that value. Now, something to note is that there it, it will be, let's say that the answer, it is a permutation, okay? And let's say you say combination, right? So you say combination, even though it's a permutation, if you collect correctly calculate what the combination value is, then you'll get the calculation points, but you're not going to get the identifying points, okay? Um, so that's that's uh, going to be how it works. There's also contrapositive statements where I'm going to give you a statement, you tell me what the uh, contrapositive statement is. Uh, there's also divisibility. Remember, divisibility is A divides B means that B is a multiple of A, right? And so doesn't necessarily mean that B is less than A. It could, or sorry, more than A. It could be less than A. Um, it just means that there's some number that we can multiply by A to get B. And then also logic statements. Um, so if you have not done well on those in... Uh, the past make sure you look over your notes and that's all that i have so remember you can do this as an open note um quiz if you if you want just don't work with other people okay i just wanted to be also clear about one more thing is that the quiz will be due uh, at 11:59 on wednesday the 28th it's 11:59 p.m eastern standard time uh, the quiz will be submitted. You still have 50 minutes to take the quiz, uh, but I gave you guys a little bit extra time to, to start it. So, good luck. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please press the like button. It lets me know I'm doing something right. If you have any questions about any of the content, please send a message to both me and the rest of the teaching team through Canvas, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Do not send it through normal email. You will not get as fast a response. If there's any suggestions for how I can make these videos better, please leave in the comments below. Don't forget to roundhouse kick the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified for when I post the next video. Anyway, I think that's good for now, and I will see you all later.